and I would, when I called him, I said, Murphy, I said, you have all, yeah, he sent about 13 books. I said, you say the same thing over and over and over again. You say the same anecdotes. Can't you think of something different? And he roared with laughter. And you know what he told me? One of the things that you mentioned just now is uh, that desire is related to energy and everything is energy and vibrations. And the more energy you send out, the more comes back. So what specific technique would you recommend for somebody to raise their energy? Because it sounds like it's all related to how much energy a person can send out. That's a very good, good question. Because when this, it, it follows desire. You have a desire. And if it's a positive desire, it, it can be negative too. But how much time are you spending on the, how many, how often are you thinking about it? Thought becomes things. And another thing that I need to point out, and that is when you do something with emotion, emotion brings it faster, draws it faster to you. Emotion is, uh, well, what you do on emotion, and you can watch a person when they cry or when they sad or when they curse and when they get angry, they're angry. The emotion is intense. And usually when they get very, very angry and then something happens because they're so angry that they don't lose, they lose the fact that they're working with an instrument that could be and cut their hand off or something. This is energy. And I think there is a statistic on it, more accidents, in this entire world are caused when somebody is really enraged in energy, anger. Because then they, they don't look at anything else. They're so caught up in anger. And so when you are projecting and you have energy, like I said, you can even taste it. You can smell it. And that's energy going into a car with the new smell. That's a perfect example of using this more, more energy because now you're experiencing it. See, we're touchy, feely, smelly people. I mean, th that brings on more energy for us. So if you have the opportunity, especially if you want a car or a new house, you go into a new house and you can smell the new house because the lumber is still exposed. And so that would be more effective. Or you, if you find an old house, get into it and roam around. And this is my place. That's how I chose when we were working, going in different areas, when my husband was traveling, I would go to rent a place. I would go in and my husband said, check it out. And I would go through the house. This doesn't smell good and I'd leave. So you become, I mean, there are all those little things that you have at your disposal that you can utilize. And so this is energy. This is energy directing to it with emotion. Okay. Thank you. Another question that I have is that, uh, especially the positive thinking part, all starts in your mind. Now, a lot of people have a negative mind. Uh, how do you get, how do you just suddenly cancel that. Uh, and I'm asking that because a lot of people uh, that I've talked to, they, continue, they just say they are not even the master of their own mind. How do you become the master of your own mind? Desire. Nobody can do it for you. You can point it out. And Dr. Murphy had a good saying. Uh, after I met him and he sent me his books, and I would, when I called him, I said, Murphy, I said, you have all, yeah, he sent about 13 books. I said, you say the same thing over and over and over again. You say the same anecdotes. Can't you think of something different? And he roared with laughter. And you know what he told me? He said, you know something? If they read it 42 times, it may sink in and they'll get it. I think that's profound. 
because sometimes you have to read it over and over and over again until you say, oh, this makes sense. Then you change. Nobody can change for you. You can't tell people to change. You can't tell people you're too negative. Nothing is going to happen to you. They don't believe it until you give them something and they look at it and might have to read it 42 times and then they'll get it. Okay. Hopefully you don't have to read it 42 times, but Murphy was the one that said it. I call it Murphy's Law. Y bueno, ¿qué les pareció este breve clip con la reina de los concursos, la señora Helena Hatzel? Me agrada mucho verla y expresarse porque transmite mucha tranquilidad y confianza, ¿no? Y como pueden ver, ella nos explicó claramente el papel que juegan los sentimientos, tanto positivos como negativos, en la consecución de nuestros objetivos. Y lo que más me llamó la atención aquí fue que nos cuenta del doctor Joseph Murphy, porque si no sabían, ella tuvo la fortuna de conocer e intercambiar ideas con el doctor Murphy en varias ocasiones. De hecho, ya les compartí otro video donde nos cuenta sobre la transmisión del pensamiento, pero lo que nos dice hoy me pareció perfecto, porque nos explica en estas palabras tan simples qué es lo que se requiere para ser amos de nuestra mente y por qué es tan importante la repetición. ¿No les ha pasado que ven una película o una serie y primero te quedas así de que, ¿qué es eso? ¿Qué acabo de ver? ¿De qué se trató? ¿Qué no entendí bien? ¿La encuentras interesante pero no la captaste bien? Y la tienes que volver a ver. Un ejemplo así rápido con la que me pasó es con una película de Christopher Nolan, Inception o El Origen en español, donde salen puros actores así de que top, ¿no? Leonardo DiCaprio y Killian Murphy, Elliot Page, entre otros. Si no la has visto, te la mega recomiendo, porque la trama está buenísima y habla de estos sueños dentro de sueños, sobre implantar ideas en el subconsciente y donde cualquier nivel de realidad puede ser válido. Está muy buena la película. El caso es que la primera vez que la vi, la verdad, dije, ¿qué es esto? Pero luego la volví a ver y comprendí más cosas. Le das la oportunidad y le agarras sabor. Y luego la vuelves a ver y entiendes más. Hasta que llega un punto en que terminas de comprender toda la trama de forma perfecta. Y dices, wow, ¿no? Esto es fascinante. Bueno, pues así es como yo comprendo esto que nos dice la señora Helena Hatzel sobre el doctor Morphy y la repetición. Se requiere tener la voluntad y el deseo de ver esos cambios en tu vida. ¿Te empapas de esta información y la practicas? Observas pequeños avances, estos resultados, y tu fe se va incrementando. Y así vas avanzando. No es una cosa de una sola vez o dos y logras algo y luego se te olvida practicarlo y luego te vuelves a dormir. Te lo digo porque me pasó en algún momento. Pero luego comprendes que para lograr observar más cambios y mantenerlos y que sea sostenible, se tiene que convertir en un estilo de vida. Y luego ya no hay marcha atrás. Aprendes a controlar tu mente y a generar los cambios de actitud casi de forma instantánea porque sabes que eso es lo que moldeará el mundo que te rodea. Entonces, espero que hayas disfrutado de este clip con la señora Helene y su valiosa información y que ayude un poco en mantener y subirte esa energía. Y si llegaste hasta aquí, muchísimas gracias por escucharme. Así que, sin más, desde Domina Tu Mente, nos vemos en el próximo videoprograma. ¡Hasta pronto!